I hear people talking bad about the way we have to live here in this country. Harping on the wars we fight and griping about the way things ought to be. And I don't mind them switching sides and standing up for things they believe in. When they're running down my country, man, they're walking on the fighting side of me. Yeah, walking on the fighting side of me. Running down the way of life, I'm fighting it. This is Jason here with Forever Free Gunner, bringing you a video about the Ace, the Gleal Ace in uh, 308. And um, it's my new battle rifle. Love it. Shot it quite a bit. Don't have any videos for you guys yet right now on this, um, but I will have some shooting videos coming up here pretty quick. Pretty uh, gnarly winter we got coming on here in Montana. So um, I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the features of the Galil. And there's quite a few videos out there, so I'm not going to get too extensive. I'm going to explain to you why I'm using this firearm and in what capacity and um we'll just go on from there so first things first um we have this nice full length rail it is absolutely an ak-47 action um it's got a little bit of a polymer lower and uh nice robust folding buttstock and um awesome barrel uh what else it is ambidextrous, 100% ambidextrous on your safeties. Uh, from safe to fire here. A little bit harder to do it from that side. Safety, fire some. And it's, you know, you have it here too. So uh, fire control, charging handle. A little bit different. Very, very smooth. The weapon is empty, guys. Yeah, so it's a awesome, awesome rifle. So we'll get to showing you guys how this works here, how this comes off pretty easy. You can remove this and your optics stay zero. So you're going to go ahead and remove this. Kind of hard, guys. All right. So. Kind of got to push it in pretty far. In and down. There it goes. Woo. So. That was fun. So you pop that off there, you set that to the side. Well, you don't set that to the side because you don't have to mess with anything in there. There is a little pressurized detent in there that holds that side in on a little miniature Picatinny rail setup. So what you do is you get your punches out. It's gonna be like a pretty small punch. What did I tell you here? What do we got? What do we got for the smallest punches here? This one will probably work. And that is a 1 and 1 16th. So, pretty small. No, yeah, 1 16th, sorry. So, you take that and you push it in. You push in and you pull back with your fingers here. Pull back toward the back. Push in, pull back. So, all that is, is this, is a spring-loaded pin here. 
that drops into a hole comes right off so then when you have your low mount low mount optic on there I don't happen to know where mine's at right at this moment probably in my go bag but uh, at any rate so now because this is low it's the same level as that you can put a lower mounted scope and uh, just like this this optic here that you get the right kind um, then you're just looking right down you have a uh, co-witness with your rear sight um, but on a bigger scope has to come further back to your eye so you got to get rid of this and do low mount AR style scope mount so I'm not going to take off my scope and have to re-zero it and do all that stuff right now just showing you how easy that is guys and the reverse of that's even easier you take it you slide it on here, you get it lined up with the rails. You push it down. It'll go in there. It's going to be more difficult because I'm trying to show you something. There it goes. Got it started in there. And it just slides right in. Slides right in. Boom, you hear it click. It is in there. It is not going anywhere. It does not move from side to side. Then you're just going to put this back on here. A lot easier to line up than the old AKs. You're going to keep forward pressure on that. You're going to give it a good bump down there. And then, as you can see, my uh, detent's not there. All you're going to do is charge the rifle. I'm going to pop that back out. Now you're all good to go. Everything's in alignment. Nice and smooth. And uh, I can confirm zero on my optic. Looking through my peep, it's right on top. Uh, lollipop in there on top so um, just an absolutely awesome smooth running rifle um, been running 125 grain low recoil um, rounds in it runs them great uh, so I did some hand loads in that so um, now the reason why I've gone to this 308 instead of the scar is accessibility of mags I had a scar for four years and a 20 round mag cost me $65, which I had a $3,000 rifle. Okay. People will say, well, if you can't afford the gas in a Ferrari, then why'd you buy a Ferrari? No, that's not it. I don't want a proprietary mag. Um, if I work in a group, I want them to be able to toss me their 308 mag. So this is my battle rifle. Okay. Absolutely, 100% my battle rifle. This would be if I was hypothetically in an emergency situation and there was an enemy and we had to go out and attack that enemy. Um, I would be a forward observer for a sniper and I would be carrying this rifle. Now, if I was doing security or if we were... Um, search and destroy I would be carrying an AR-15 lighter weight more rounds right I carry 200 rounds I carry uh, 80 up here 20 in my rifle and I have four um, 25 rounders on my back so it's a total of 200 rounds um, of hate to lay down and then uh, if it's a serious situation my battle belt has an additional um, uh, 25 rounds on it and uh, my bag my go bag would have an additional 200 rounds for a one-time top off so that's a lot of weight in the 308 I can do the same thing with an AR but I won't have the distance so um, this is 
has its place in my repertoire of firearms or whatever you want to call it. Um, it it's by far my favorite round. I love the 308. I love the penetration, the knockdown power, the versatility. Um, so it's a pretty awesome round. I can go all the way down to 110 grain bullet and I can go out and shoot coyotes and, and not destroy them. I can go all the way up to a 209 uh, grain bullet or yeah, 209 and uh, and lay down some extreme hate at close range on hogs or home defense, whatever you want to call it. But so this is my rifle, guys. I uh, just want to do a short discussion on that. I uh, also need to talk to you guys about um, what I feel is um, there's a common thread that people feel like something's coming, right? And I'm not a fear monger. I, I, you know, I live my life happy. And uh, even though, um, you know, there's adversities in life, right? Um, but I live my life happy. I have a beautiful daughter, a beautiful wife. And uh, I want to be prepared if something bad happens, right? Uh, solar flare, uh, attack from a foreign government on our soil. There's, you could name a million different scenarios, right? It's just about being prepared and not just yourself, but you need to be a part of a community that is prepared because one man isn't going to do security on uh, his home 24-7, uh, seven days a week until the problems are over, you know? We're experiencing some really crazy weather, some really crazy things going on in the world. Uh, seems like we're kind of going full tilt towards civil war. The thing in Venezuela is kind of heating everything up. And please, God, let it be nothing. But if it is something, I would like to be prepared. And I would like everybody out there that watches me to be prepared. So we're going to do some videos on uh, what I feel is preparedness. Um, and what is in my go bag. We're not going to go over that today. You can see this is my uh, level 3A um, trauma uh, body armor. And then I have 9 mil underneath of that. So, um, you know, they're going to be coming at you with some really hardcore stuff. Your foreign government or whatever. If that, if that was what happens, um, they're not going to be nice. Or if... The neighbor up the road that's not part of your community wants your food, knows you have food, and wants to come take it, right? And the stores aren't getting trucks to them, and there's all those kinds of problems that happen, you know, civil unrest. So, um, I know I'm kind of ranting here, guys, but, you know, you need to be able to reload, have your stuff to reload. You need to have stuff to feed your family for at least six months, at least six months. And then supplement that food with hunting, fishing. You can still do those things. Uh, I would recommend doing them with a security detail and one person is doing the fishing or the harvesting of the animal and the other people are overwatch, you know. Um, it's a serious situation. So, um, and if you have a community and you get a deer, or you get an elk in that kind of situation where there's no laws, right, um, you feed the whole community, you feed your neighbor, you feed you, you feed everybody because you don't want to just waste that meat, right? You can prepare some of it, but you don't want to waste it. So have a community, have like-minded people around you, and uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. I, I can tell you a couple things that are coming up. We're going to do this uh, ARM, American uh, Reserve... Oh, uh, ARM, uh, American Reserve um, Munitions, and these are supposed to be pretty cool little deal. They're 9mm, that is 80 grains, traveling at 1,525 foot per second, 
energy is 430 foot pounds of pressure on so I have some clear ballistics gel we're going to do this as soon as the weather warms up a little bit guys you're gonna see this you're gonna see um, some new Hornaday rounds um, for the 308 and um, we're gonna go over stuff like the stat tourniquet which is what um, me and my people carry, as well as we do have some cats, but I kind of like this idea a little bit more for training, teaching kids. Uh, it's a lot less complex. It's not a bunch of twisting. Um, and I, I think this is absolutely efficient if you can train them easier and faster. And uh, when I show you guys how I want to use this, it's not going to be in this configuration, this little round ball. I mean, it's going to come out of here um, just as soon as I, I don't have my knife on me. It's upstairs, but um, I'm going to get it in a loop ready. The first couple ratchets clicked. That way, it just slides on like a cat tourniquet. Like, you slide it over and then just start cinching it down to, to high heaven so that you can uh, stop the bleeding. So, um, there's that. Those go on my battle gear. I carry a defensive knife on the front of my vest. I carry high quality OC-10. So that is no joke. That is uh, some legit pepper spray. You do not want to be sprayed by that. So it is going to put you, it's guaranteed to put you on the ground. So um, that's just kind of my my little rant I haven't talked to you guys in quite a while I got quite a bit of bit of a mess uh, going on so um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching forever free gunner God bless and keep your powder dry